Now we will deal with Lewis structures of more complex molecules. And so there's a set of rules for dealing with these. They don't make a, a ton of sense just to sit and read them. Uh, you do want to write them down, but mostly we're going to want to work through examples of what these rules mean, these steps, as we go through them. So you might pause the video and uh, write all this stuff down, and then we'll go through the examples of the steps. So uh, I will read them out loud for a minute. Step one, draw the molecule. If there's an element with only one atom, put it in the center. If the smallest number of any element is two, put them together in the center, bonded together. Uh, the second thing that you're going to do is you're going to connect each atom to uh, uh, the atom next to it with single bonds, just, just dashes. And then you're just going to go through and you're going to satisfy the octet rule for them all. In other words, you're going to make them all happy. You're going to give them all eight valence electrons. <coughs> What you're going to do next is uh, you're going to use the formula to count the valence total, see if you use the right number of electrons. In other words, we're just going to kind of make the, elect uh, the molecule happy. We're going to satisfy the octet rule. We're going to do it all. We're not going to worry about budgeting. We're just going to kind of throw all of our money around. And then we're going to budget afterwards, and we're going to see, well, did we have enough electrons to make them all happy like that? And I'll show you how to do that. If you did use too many, you've got to save electrons and the way that you save money on your budget is uh, by using double or triple bonds. Remember that each double bond saves two electrons. Double bonds cannot go on halogens, hydrogen, or metals. Do not ever put that. You can put a, a double bond on oxygen, sulfur, arsenic, you know, phosphorus, silicon, carbon, nitrogen. Uh, you do not want to do a halogen. You do not want to do hydrogen. If you've done one of those, uh, it will be wrong. So let's go through some examples. <coughs> First example we'll do is the most common uh, compound that we know of. It's water. Water comes up a lot in these examples. H2O. And so we're going to do what I said to do a moment ago. If you check your notes, if you pause the video and wrote these down, it says to draw a molecule. If there's an element with only one atom, put it in the center. If the smallest number is two, put them together. So if we see here there are two hydrogens and there's one oxygen. So the thing there's only one of is oxygen, so oxygen is going to go in the center. And then we're going to put the others around it. <coughs> um, and so we're going to put the O in the center. Do not attach the H's together. Attach each atom to the central atom. So we're going to, there we go. Remember from before this dash here represents a, a bond. It's a, a bonded pair of electrons. So there you go. Um, we've done step one. We've put the things together. We put them all in the center. We're going to connect them with single bonds. We've done step two. And now we're going to satisfy the octet rule. We're going to try to, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to uh, do our best to try to make them all happy. So, um, remember uh, from before how we make these happy. Um, we should probably uh, do a little, little jot, a little review here. If you uh, recall, the to make them happy, metals want to end up with nothing, no valence electrons. Uh, Non-metals want eight, and hydrogen wants two. Got a little bit off kilter there, my camera. Sorry about that. <coughs> so we're going to go ahead and start doing that now. We're going to make them all happy. So we go ahead and if we look at oxygen it has two, four, so it wants five, six, seven, eight, because oxygen is a non-metal here. Oxygen being a non-metal it's going to want to have those eight valence electrons. And so it's happy. Hydrogen wants only two. A dash, remember a bond, counts there are two electrons there, so it's already done. Hydrogen is done. Oxygen is done. They both, they all have what they need. So if we go back to our list, it says that the next thing we do is to use the formula to count the valence total. This is the number that we had to use. <coughs> so, if we look at hydrogen, 
there were two hydrogen atoms, and each one had how many valence electrons coming in? Well, hydrogen has one valence electron, so we had two hydrogens at one valence electron each is two. This is the part that you kind of got to work through examples to understand. And then we had oxygen. We had one oxygen atom. Oxygen has six valence electrons, so we had uh, six valence. Uh, we had one at six valence electrons for a total of six, and two plus six is eight. So that tells us that we were supposed to use eight valence electrons here. How many did we use? Well, let's count up our total here and see if we used eight. We got two, four, and remember a bond counts as two, so that's six, and that is eight. We were supposed to use eight. We did use eight. We are done. That is the Lewis structure of water. It's just an H to an O to an H with two lone pairs around the O. And that's what it is, and we're done. We've done it. Yay us. So if we look at the uh, next example here, the um, um, <coughs> NH3 is known as ammonia. <coughs> Follow the same steps. Start with putting the thing there's only one of in the middle. That would be the nitrogen. Nitrogen in the middle. And then we're going to put H's around it. H, 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 just kind of keep the thing there's one of in the center, attach each of the other things to it, not to each other, but to it. And then we're going to try to make them all happy, right? So let's count them up. So around nitrogen, we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll make it happy by giving it seven and eight. And if we look at the hydrogen, hydrogen is only going to want a two, and it's already got a dash. Notice with hydrogen, once it has a dash, it's done. So it can only bond once, so two. So it's good, it's good, it's good. Now let's count up the totals here and see if we've used the right total. We've got, uh, if we go over here back to the valence total, we look for nitrogen. Nitrogen back here on the periodic table has five valence electrons. So, and there's one of them. So one times five is five. Hydrogen has one valence electron. And so one, uh, let's see, three times one is three. So we were supposed to use eight. Now these two examples both came out with eight to begin with. They won't always do that. So uh, that's that. So we were supposed to use eight. How many did we use? Two, four, six, eight. We're good. Yay. So that is the Lewis structure of ammonia. It's got three bonds to a hydrogen and a lone pair above it. Next example is SO3. <coughs> so let's look at that one here. Uh, we look for the atom that only is going to go in the center, which is obviously going to be S. We put a bond to an O, another bond to an O, and another bond to an O. <coughs> and then we're going to go through and we're going to make them all happy, right? What was that? I don't know what that was. There we go. Let's try this instead. Um, let's see. Sorry about this. Now it's counting kind of up. Oh, here we go. There we go. So we got all everybody happy there. And so we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Everybody's happy. Uh, so now let's go back and count up the valence totals. The valence totals are sulfur. We've got one sulfur atom. If you look over here, sulfur, there is uh, should be six valence electrons in the sulfur. So we've got one at six, one sulfur atom, six valence electrons in it. And then we look for oxygen. Oxygen is also in that same column, so it also has six, but there are three of those oxygen atoms. Three times six is 18. So if we add those up, we get 24. We should have used 24. So if we count through here, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. We used 26, but we should have used 
24, so we've made a deadly error. So what are we going to do about this? Well, if we go back to our <coughs> rules over here, it says if we use too many, which we did here, you can save electrons by using double or triple bonds. Each double bond saves two electrons. So if we look through here, um, we say, okay, well, we need to save two electrons because we used 26 and we needed to use 24. So apparently doing one double bond will help us. Well, how do you do that? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to just turn one of these single bonds, it doesn't matter which one, into a double bond. And then we're going to make everyone happy again. And so if we read it up, <coughs> if we read this out properly, we'll see that the... Uh, this guy right now has two, four, six, eight, ten. It doesn't need all of those, so we can get rid of those. So those are gone now. And this guy here, the sulfur in the middle, has two, four, six, eight, ten, so he can get rid of that. So anytime you put in a double, you basically cross off a lone pair off of each of the things that are double bonding, and then throw an extra dash in the middle. So now if we count them up, we say this guy has two, four, six, eight, this guy has two, four, six, eight, and these two we haven't changed. And if we count up the total now, it's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, which is the right total. So there's our answer. Double bond to an O, single bond to an O, single bond to an O, and then we just make everybody else happy by giving them a total of eight valence electrons that is SO3. Okay, so for our final example here, <coughs> we haven't dealt with charge, and actually our rules even mention charge. Uh, here's an ion, carbonate ion. We're going to have to do carbonate ion a little bit differently because it's got that charge to deal with. So what are we going to do about that charge? Well, uh, we'll come to that in a minute. So let's start out the regular way we've been doing it. Let's start out with, um, with, um, putting the thing there's only one of in the center, the carbon. Then we're going to dash to an O, dash to an O, dash to an O. And so now we're going to uh, just go ahead and make everybody happy, right? So now everybody's happy, and we can go through and count up how many we should have used. So carbon, if we look on the periodic table, has four valence electrons. There's only one of them. Oxygen has six valence electrons, but there are three of them, three of them. And so that's four plus 18 is 22. We should have used 22 electrons there. Well, how many did we use? Well, we used 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. So um, we have used the wrong number. But we need to stop now and actually think about this charge. Well, what does a charge mean? Well, a charge means that you have a different number of electrons than what we would have counted. It means you have either more or fewer. Well, you have a negative charge, that means you've gotten more electrons. Remember, negative electrons are negative, so if you have more electrons than uh, if you have a negative charge, you have more electrons. So we have two more electrons here because it's a negative two. Had this been a positive two, we would know we would have two fewer electrons. So as we're counting these up, we counted correctly for the CO3, but we didn't account for this charge. And the charge says we have two more electrons. So we don't have 22, we have 24 electrons. Now we go back and count and we see we got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. So we still have a problem, but not as big of a problem. We only need to uh, get rid of two electrons, which we can do the same way did, we did last time. Put in a double bond, cross off a pair from that guy, cross off a pair from that guy, put the double bond in between. Now you've got the Lewis structure of carbonate ion, which looks something like that. And the whole thing has a negative two charge, so we'll include it inside of that bracket.